Well, good morning, and welcome to worship on this, the seventh Sunday after the Pentecost. It is a good time and a good place for us to be the gathered people of God. Before we jump further into announcements, today we welcome Brad Lambrick to the organ bench, and Brad will be playing for us today as well as the fourth and fifth Sundays beginning in September. So uh, thank you, Brad, for being here. Yes, yes. Um, and so, uh, yes, I'm just very pleased about all of that. So, um, a couple of announcements. VBS starts tonight. Uh, dinner is at 5 o'clock. And then we go through Thursday evening, and that will conclude with a program. Um, and no worship on Wednesday evening. Okay? So, that's, that's just for this week of VBS. All right? Um, let's see, uh, Fall Festival Sunday, so that is the first uh, Sunday in August. We will worship at 10 a.m. up at the park in the shelter that Esther does bingo at, okay? And there's a few other things because fall is creeping around the corner. There's some things to look forward to um, as, as we get closer to September, okay? Any other announcements that need to be made? If not, then I invite you to stand as you are able, and we continue with confession and forgiveness. Blessed be the Holy Trinity, one God who forgives all our sin, whose mercy endures forever. Amen. Almighty God, to whom all hearts are open, all desires known, and from whom no secrets are hid, cleanse the thoughts of our hearts by the inspiration of your Holy Spirit, that we may perfectly love you and worthily magnify your holy name through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Let us confess our sin in the presence of God and of one another. Gracious God, have mercy on us. We confess that we have turned from you and given ourselves into the power of sin. We are truly sorry and humbly repent. In your compassion, forgive us our sins, known and unknown, things we have done and things we have failed to do. Turn us again to you and uphold us by your spirit, so that we may live and serve you in newness of life, through Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. Amen. Now hear and receive the good news. God, who is rich in mercy, loved us even when we were dead in sin and made us alive together with Christ. By grace you have been saved. In the name of Jesus Christ, your sins are forgiven. Almighty God, strengthen you with power through the Holy Spirit that Christ may live in your hearts through faith. Amen. We join in singing our gathering song. grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all.
us pray the prayer of the day. Almighty and ever-living God, you are always more ready to hear than we are to pray, and you gladly give more than we either desire or deserve. Pour upon us your abundant mercy. Forgive us those things that weigh on our conscience, and give us those good things that come only through your Son, Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. Amen. Please be seated. The first reading is from Genesis. Then the Lord said, How great is the outcry against Sodom and Gomorrah, and how very grave their sin. I must go down and see whether they have done altogether according to the outcry that has come to me, and if not, I will know. So the men turned from there and went toward Sodom, where Abraham remained standing before the Lord. Then Abram came near and said, Will you indeed sweep away the righteous with the wicked? Suppose there are fifty righteous within the city. Will you then sweep away the place and not forgive it for the fifty righteous who are in it? Far be it from you do such a thing, to slay the righteous with the wicked, so that the righteous fare as the wicked. Far be that from you. Shall not the judge of all the earth do what is just? And the Lord said, If I find at Sodom fifty righteous in the city, I will forgive the whole place for their sake. Abram answered, Let me take it upon myself to speak to the Lord. I who am but dust and ashes. Suppose five of the fifty righteous are lacking. Will you destroy the whole city for lack of five? And he said, I will not destroy it if I find forty-five there. Again he spoke to him. Suppose forty are found there, he answered. For the sake of forty, I will not do it. Then he said, Oh, do not let the Lord be angry if I speak. Suppose thirty are found there, he answered. I will not do it if I find thirty there, he said. Let me take it upon myself to speak to the Lord. Suppose twenty are found there, he answered. For the sake of twenty, I will not destroy it. Then he said, Oh, do not let the Lord be angry if I speak just once more. Suppose ten are found there, he answered. For the sake of ten, I will not destroy it. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Psalm 138 will be read responsively. I will give thanks to you, O Lord, with my whole heart. Before the gods, I will sing your praise. I will bow down toward your holy temple and praise your name because of your steadfast love and faithfulness. For you have been glorified your name and your word above all things. When I called, you answered me. You increased my strength within me. All the rulers of the earth will praise you, O Lord, when they have heard the words of your mouth. They will sing of the ways of the Lord, that great is the glory of the Lord. The Lord is high, yet cares for the lowly, perceiving the haughty from afar. Though I walk in the midst of trouble, you keep me safe. You stretch forth your hand against the fury of my enemies. Your right hand shall save me. You will make good your purpose for me. O Lord, your steadfast love endures forever. Do not abandon the works of your hands. The second reading is from Colossians. As you therefore have received Christ Jesus the Lord, continue to live your lives in him, rooted and built up in him and established in the faith just as you were taught, abounding in thanksgiving. See to it that no one takes you, you captive through philosophy and empty deceit, according to human tradition, according to the elemental spirits of the universe, and not according to Christ. For in him the whole fullness of deity dwells bodily, and you have come to fullness in him, who is the head of every ruler and authority. In him also you were circumcised with a spiritual circumcision, by putting off the body of the flesh in the circumcision of Christ. When you were buried with him in baptism, you were also raised with him through faith in the power of God, who raised him from the dead. And when you were dead in trespasses and the uncircumcision of your flesh, God made you alive together with him. 
when you forgave us all our trespasses, erasing the record that stood against us with its legal demands. He set this aside, nailing it to the cross. He disarmed the rulers and authorities and made a public example of them, triumphing over them in it. Therefore, do not let anyone condemn you in matters of food and drink or of observing festivals, new moons, or Sabbaths. These are only a shadow of what is to come, but the substance belongs to Christ. Do not let anyone disqualify you, insisting on self-abasement and worship of angels, dwelling on visions puffed up without cause by a human way of thinking, and not holding fast to the head, from whom the whole body, nourished and held together by its ligaments and sinews, grows with a growth that is from God. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Please stand. for this day according to Luke the 11th chapter. Glory to you, O Lord. Jesus was praying in a certain place, and after he had finished, one of his disciples said to him, Lord, teach us to pray, as John taught his disciples. He said to them, when you pray, say, Father, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come. Give us each day our daily bread. And forgive us our sins, as we ourselves forgive everyone indebted to us. And do not bring us to the time of trial. And he said to them, Suppose one of you has a friend, and you, ha you go to him at midnight and say to him, Friend, lend me three loaves of bread, for a friend of mine has arrived, and I have nothing to set before him. And he answers from within, Do not bother me, the door has already been locked, and my children are in bed. I cannot get up and give you anything. I tell you, even though he will not get up and give him anything because he is his friend, at least because of his persistence, he will get up and give him whatever he needs. So I ask you, ask and it will be given you, search and you will find, knock and the door will be opened for you. For everyone who asks receives, and everyone who searches finds, and for any, everyone who knocks, the door will be opened. Is there anyone among you who, if your child asks for a fish, will give him a snake instead of a fish? Or if the child asks for an egg, will give a scorpion? If you then, if you then, who are evil, know how to give good thing, good gifts to your children, how much more will the Holy Father give the Holy Spirit to those who ask Him? The Gospel of the Lord. Please be seated, and children, will you come up and join me? everyone. So I have a question. What's, so when you pray, when do you do it? At nighttime before bed? Yeah. What about before meals? Sometimes? Yeah. Yeah. What prayer do you say before meals? Do you know? What prayer do you all say before? Do some of you say, say, come Lord Jesus? Yeah, come Lord Jesus, be our guest. Let these gifts to us be blessed. Amen. And um, so that is a prayer of thanksgiving, right? We're saying thank you for the food that we have received, right? Yeah. Now, when I was little, and I used to go to my grandparents' house, my grandma and grandpa would add something to the end of that prayer. They would add the following. By his hand, let us be fed. Give us, Lord, our daily bread. And so not only was it thank you for this meal, but it was a thank you. It was a reminder 
that by God's hand we're always fed, right? That God feeds us always. Yeah, yeah. When else do we pray? When else do you pray? Before bed, you pray at meal times. When else? At lunch. Do any of you pray when someone is sick and need of maybe some need of healing? Yeah? Do we do that? Yeah, so we pray all the time. And Jesus asks us to pray. And we go to God like we would to our own parents. Right? Confident that God will hear us. Yeah, that's what prayer is about, going to God, just like a child goes to their parent, in confidence. All right, will you pray with me? Yeah? All right, repeat after me, please. Dear God, thank you for giving us a way to talk to you before meals, at bedtime, and whenever else. Grace, mercy, and peace be to all of you on this day. From God the Father and our Lord and Savior Jesus the Christ. Amen. Ask, seek, knock. Are these old words of Jesus' really true? I've known folks over the years who tell me that they've asked God for many things, receiving only silence. I've known folks who have engaged in serial, serious theological searches with no clear discoveries. I've also known folks who could report that they have knocked and knocked quite patiently and could not find an open to any door. I read an article once, this was a few years ago now, and I found it in the Washington Post. It was written by a man who had a very sick baby in intensive care. He wanted nothing more than to help his child, but this young father had a hard time praying. He wrote, family in Maine prays, friends in Oregon pray, whole congregations say, Lord, hear our prayer when the priest announces Alex's name and condition. My wife's sister, a Master of Theological Studies candidate, has mobilized the whole faculty and student body to pray to God on my son's behalf. Certainly, I should join in. It seems reasonable, expected. That's the wonderful thing about prayer. It's easy to sneak in, just think in, think it. I look at Alex again. His situation seems tailor-made to pull a prayer from a tired father's soul. Only a monster would fail. I lean against the wall again and look out the window. I cannot do it. Why do you suppose this young father could not pray for his critically ill son? Perhaps he is agnostic about God and or prayer, even in this particular foxhole. Why do you suppose many people intend to pray, would even agree out loud that prayer is important, but never really get around to it? An avalanche of the mundane takes practical priority over prayer in a given week. We mean to pray. We even want to pray more, but usually don't. Perhaps our lack of attention to prayer, prayer reveals what no one is willing to say out loud. Oh, and one more question. Why, come to think of it, pray at all? God knows our needs even before we voice them. Now here's something I've been thinking a lot about lately, and it just might help us to get to the heart of these questions. Consider this idea with me. More than any other single action, how we pray reveals most clearly our true beliefs about God and what we really think God is capable of doing in this world. Now, what do I mean by that? Well, just this. It is possible for a person to fake worship, to mumble the creed and home soon enough. A person can even fake church membership, commune a couple of times per year, 
make a contribution of record and will keep you on the rolls in the Lutheran tradition. Our governing documents say as much. And I could even fake a sermon. Online homiletical resources abound if I were so inclined. Maybe you noticed, maybe you wouldn't. My point is, is that a lot of what passes for modern Christianity can be faked or endured without thinking about it too much. One thing a person can't fake, though, is prayer. No one is there to check up on you. You either do it or you don't. When it's just me and God alone in my private place, the words and hopes I share with God or lack thereof, lack thereof reveal more about my real convictions concerning how God works in the world than a host of Sunday mornings could ever. Prayer is that place where we can most truly be ourselves with God. No one is there to check up on our theological orthodoxy. No one is waiting to say, nope, you can't do that. If you really want to find an accurate gauge that will measure one's true and honest beliefs about God, examine closely the content of your prayers. It's possible to fake a lot about church life, but you can't fake prayer. How we pray reveals what we truly believe about God. In our reading from Luke this morning, we are given some rather peculiar advice about prayer. Jesus is, advises his disciples to be persistent, like the friend who will not go away until he gets his neighbor out of bed at midnight to borrow a few groceries. <laughs> I say, if any guest arrives that late, well, they can just wait for breakfast, right? But the idea seems to be that our prayers are at least somewhat important in getting God to take action. God is good, Jesus says, and ask him yourself for what you need. Even evil parents give good things to their kids. Look how much more you can expect from God. So ask, search, knock, says Jesus. Tell God what's on your mind. Now, perhaps you're wondering why we need to ask God for these things in the first place. Can I really rouse God to action and change God's mind like Abraham did at Sodom? If I just badger the Dickens out of the Lord? Abraham talks God down six times. Several of these times finds Abraham reminding God of God's own job. Talk about uppity prayer. <laughs> Far be it from you to do such a thing, Abraham says. Far be it from you. Shall not the judge of the whole earth do what is just? Abraham, at first glance, appears to be talking to a wayward child, not the author of the cosmos. And Abraham miraculously survives the encounter. So, yeah, I think we're given the green light in these stories to take it all before God. Lay it right out there with unedited honesty. Please quit playing with, praying with your best manners, right? God knows you don't really sound that way in your normal voice. But a question still remains, doesn't it? Does God wait until we pray for some, before acting? Do we really need to badger God, or does God already know our needs and hopes before bringing them to voice? Why bother to pray? Why do we ask and knock in the first place? Well, apparently God likes us to ask. For prayer to matter, we must really want what we are praying for. Now that, my, that may sound silly, considering what we don't always get what we pray for, even if we ask with honesty, search until we drop, and knock until our knuckles are bloody. David James Duncan writes, As for the time I asked Jesus for a base hit at a ball game, when I stepped to the plate and struck out three pitches, I was relieved. If every kid in America could get up and just hit by asking Jesus, we'd all bat a thousand and ruin baseball for a day. In a day. But God, it seems, likes us to ask. God needs to know if we really want what we're praying for. Let me give you an example of what I'm saying. Look at three little words from that very famous prayer that we all pray. Right? The prayer that Jesus teaches his disciples. The prayer that we are taught. Your kingdom come. Now, we usually pray these words with such ease. But... 
Do we actually realize what we're asking for here? Your kingdom come. What could it mean if God's kingdom really did come in all its fullness? What would have to change in the world as we know it? Do we really want the kingdom to come right now? Do we really want the outsider to be included? Do we really want the wealth of this world redistributed? Do we want the last to be first and the discarded to become family? That's what I'm, now see, that's what I'm talking about. God likes us to ask, search, and knock because God needs to know. For prayer to matter, we must really want what we're praying for. So before couples ask God for healing in their marriage, they need to utter, be utterly honest about whether that's what they truly want. Before a congregation searches or discerns a new direction in ministry, those collected disciples must be really honest about whether they truly will truly invest the time and energy required to make the changes necessary. Before knocking angrily on the many doors of injustice and poverty in the world, an individual must take stock of whether there's honest will to make a shift in one's own personal life that spends far too much time on the self. God, dear people, is not a magician. There are some early uh, frescoes depicting the rising of Lazarus. And Jesus actually stands outside of the grave with a little wand. <laughs> no, God is not a magician. For prayer to matter, by which, which, by the way, is different from it being successful. We must really want what we're praying for. So ask, search, and knock, all three. Someone very once wisely said, Prayer is trying to tell the truth, and we should never be more honest than we are in prayer. In Jesus' name, amen.
table and let us together confess our faith. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, God's only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended to the dead. On the third day he rose again. He ascended into heaven. He is seated at the right hand of the Father, and he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. Trusting in God's extraordinary love, let us come, to, come near to the Holy One in prayer. Rooted and built up in Christ, we pray for the church. Embolden church leaders to take risks for the sake of the gospel and equip the baptized to proclaim your extravagant love for the whole world. Merciful God, rejoicing in the works of your hands, we pray for the natural world. Make rivers and lakes, oceans and all waterways sparkle with your radiance. Protect water sources and strengthen those who defend them. Merciful God, interceding on behalf of the vulnerable, we pray for the peoples of the world. Inspire all rulers, governing authorities with your justice. Guide the work of legislatures and public officials that they advocate for the well-being of those they serve. Merciful God, Persistent in prayer, we pray for our neighbors in need. To all who hunger, give daily bread. To all who have bread, give hunger for justice. Open us to the cries of those who suffer. We pray especially this day for Ken, Irma Jean, Kim, Colt, Amanda, Tim, Jennifer, Ruth, Carla, and Sophia. For Dwayne, Luann, Donna, Patty, and Marge. Guard both day and night those who serve in our military, both at home and abroad. For Matthew, Jordan, Lucas, Mitchell, and Patrick. And for all those we name before you now in the quiet of our hearts. Merciful God. Abounding in thanksgiving, we pray for this congregation. Bless the prayer and fellowship ministries in this place. Call us together in times of praise and blessing, trouble and sorrow in your holy name. Merciful God, buried with Christ in baptism and raised with him to new life, we give thanks for your saints who rest in your eternal presence. Join our voices with theirs as we sing of your great glory. Merciful God, receive the prayers of your children, merciful God, and hold us forever in your steadfast love. Through Jesus Christ, our holy wisdom. Amen. The peace of Christ be with you always. Let us share that peace with one another. Judy, look at you. God's peace, Kathy. God's peace. God's peace. God's peace. God's peace. And now as we are seated, our ushers will wait upon us, gathering our morning's offerings, our tithes, our gifts to God.
let us pray. Praise and thanks to you, holy God, for by your word you made all things. You spoke light into darkness, and you called forth beauty from chaos and brought life into being. For your word of life, O God, we give you thanks and praise. By your word you called your people Israel to tell of your wonderful gifts, freedom from captivity, water on the desert journey, a pathway home from exile, and wisdom for life with you. For your word of life, O God, we give you thanks and praise. Through Jesus, your word made flesh, you speak to us and you call us to witness. Forgiveness through the cross, life to those entombed by death in the way of your self-giving love. For your word of life, O God, we give you thanks and praise. Send your spirit of truth, O God. Rekindle your gifts within us. Renew our faith. Increase our hope and deepen our love for the sake of a world in need. Faithful to your word, O God, draw near to all who call on you. Through Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord, to whom with you and the Holy Spirit be honor and glory forever. Amen. Gathered into one by the Holy Spirit, we pray together as Jesus taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. Receive now the benediction. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord's face shine on you with grace and mercy. The Lord look upon you with favor and give you peace. In the name of the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Amen. As we go on our way today, we do so, singing What a Friend We Have in Jesus.
beloved, go in peace to love and serve the Lord. Amen. Thank you.